Hey everybody, it's Lee here with another crypto mining video update. Uh, it's been a little while since I've uh, done one of these, um, most because I didn't really have actually uh, anything to share with you guys. Um, since my last video I was kind of just focused on mining uh, Feathercoin and um, there wasn't really anything else of interest um, that I was that interested in mining. Um, but recently a few things have uh, changed up. Um, because uh, Ethereum has uh, skyrocketed in price um, and that looks like an interesting coin to be uh, mining. Uh, I was interested in mining it um, quite some time ago but I had some technical issues um, with uh, Windows uh, 10. So just before we get into this, uh, this particular miner, the ETH miner uh, that I'm going to be showing you works best with uh, older versions of Windows. So if you have uh, Windows 8 or Windows 10, um, like I did, um, you might be able to get the program to run, but it will probably might work a little bit slower than normal, or you might not be able to get it to run at all. So um, it's best if you use an older version of the Windows. I'm using an old version of Windows uh, Vista 64-bit, uh, um, and you can also use this on Windows uh, 7 as well. They're the best ones to, um, to use it on. So in this video, I'm just going to be showing you um, how I'm mining uh, Ethereum, and what settings I'm using, what port I'm using, and the results that I am getting. Okay, so we're in uh, Windows uh, Vista, and the ETH miner is already running, and that's this uh, window here. You can see it's sort of ticking away. And on the right hand side, I've just got MSI Afterburner running, um, just so you can see the uh, various uh, details about the graphics uh, card itself. Um, so at the moment, um, the graphics card that I'm using is a, a GeForce GTX uh, 970. It's made by uh, MSI and it's very good, uh, fast, uh, quiet and uh, efficient graphics card. Um, I do recommend that. Um, so with the ETH miner, we're getting about 18.5 uh, mega hashes. Um, on these uh, ETH miner, they give you the whole, uh, the full sort of uh, result in in hashes per second so what that means is that you're getting a long number which is a little bit difficult to read at, at first um, but what you were really want to be looking for is just making that you've got at least sort of um, seven digits or or really eight digits um, a mega hash is uh, basically one million hashes so what you really want to be looking for is um, somewhere between um, above basically um, 10 million um, hashes. So in this case, we're getting um, just over 18 uh, mega hashes, or 18 million in that case. So uh, sorry if that was uh, long-winded, but basically, if you're not um, seeing, you know, seven or eight digits here, um, your hash speed is going to be too low, and you're not really going to make uh, very much uh, Ethereum. Um, okay, so that's that said. So the ETH miner that I'm using is uh, this one. I'll just open up the folder here. Um, so there's a couple of different uh, versions floating around. Um, I've tried a few. Um, this is the latest one that I found, which is this Genoil one, and it's 1.0.4b3. Uh, nice and uh, easy to uh, remember. Um, let's also preface that as well, just in case you can't see it on the screen. It's uh, I'll give it a whole lot, actually. It's the ETH miner 0.9.41 Genoil 1.04b3. I'll put the link in the description so you guys can uh, find it easily. Okay, so once you've downloaded it, and then in, I've just here, you know, just put the actual folder um, just on my desktop. You don't have to install it in any particular locations. It just runs directly from the folder itself. Um, you'll have a couple of uh, startup files. Um, you've got the ETH miner itself. There's a README, um, and you'll probably see when you. If when you open it for the first time yourself, you'll see this uh, Supernova CUDA and this Supernova um, OCL. So the difference between this miner and some of the other miners uh, for different algorithms is that um, this miner is good for um, NVIDIA cards and it's also good for AMD cards. So you can mine um, uh, using CUDA, which uses um, which is like the development platform for NVIDIA cards, or you can use OpenCL, which is the development versions for your um, AMD card. So, uh, regardless of what graphics card you got, you should be able to use the same uh, miner, which is um, helpful. Um, and they both get um, comparable uh, results as well, um, as far as I know. So, um, I'll just show you my actual. So, we've got these um, basically batch files. 
So I'll just show you my um, setup. I'll just show you what um, settings and everything I'm using. So I've just got this uh, saved as my setup dash CUDA. So because like I say, I've got uh, an NVIDIA card. And then this is my setup here. So I'll just break down the bits for you. Sorry, it's a bit uh, flickering on the screen. Um, and hopefully you can sort of uh, see it clear enough. Um, so the first part of the bat file, it just calls up the ETH miner program. Then you've got these switches. Um, the U switch, so it's like dash U, basically tells it that we want to mine uh, using the uh, CUDA platform. Uh, and the second switch is dash F, which tell is, tells it that we want to use pool mining and the pool that we want to use. Um, so I'm using the evenpool.co and then it just continues on the extension from there. So you've got the actual pool address and if you actually go to the evenpool.co it'll tell you how to format your actual uh, pool address properly. Um, but basically you've got the, uh, the pool address here and then you have forward slash question uh, minor, which so is another switch. Um, this first part where it's got minor equals, I've got 18. This is almost like you're setting your own um, kind of hash rate um, or difficulty. So in this case, I've got it set to 18. So that indicates my hash rate, which is, as we know, uh, discussed just a moment ago, it's um, about 18 mega hash. It doesn't have to be exact, but it won't. It should be in the ballpark of exactly where you are. So if you fire the, um, the ETH miner up for the very first time, um, just take whatever your base uh, hash rate is and then um, use it to modify the, this first number. And it will just helps, um, uh, it's like a way of setting your difficulty. So basically your share amounts um, are get set to the about the right amount. I think they might have changed it and updated that now. So it's a bit more dynamic, um, but that's how it is uh, at the moment. So the first part is our hash rate, then we've got out, and then this part here is our Evram address. Um, just a quick little tip, make sure your Evram address starts 0x, and then your the Evram address should follow afterwards. Um, when I first um, exported my address out of uh, GEF on my Mac, it just exported as 5161 uh, and then and then the rest of the number there afterwards and that's not actually a valid uh, EVROM address. Um, all EVROM addresses start with 0x so just make sure you've got the whole uh, lot in there. Then we've got, um, after that we've got another at sign and then this last part is basically just a rig name. I think that's now redundant unless you've got um, several uh, uh, rigs mining under the same sort of EVROM address um, but under different rig names. I think that's all that's for. So that's um, my uh, batch file uh, and that runs fine. Um, I'll just show you as well. You can also do um, CPU mining uh, with the uh, ETH miner. So I'll just show you that as well. So we'll just open up that batch file. So it's kind of pretty similar to what we just had. Um, the only difference is this. So you've got the ETH miner, it calls up the program and then this switch in the previous one we had dash u this one we've got dash c which tells it that we want cpu mining and then all the pool details are basically the same um, the only difference is we've set the hash uh, difficulty uh, lower so we've set the hash rate to one and at the end we've just give it a different rig name i've just done risky fire cpu so you can see how that is um, i'll show you um, yeah, if you've got like a AMD card, I'll just show you how the um, uh, the OpenCL uh, setup is. So this is obviously just like a demo um, a batch file, just so you can see the different uh, configuration. So it's ETH miner, and then in my one where I've got a CUDA uh, card, I had dash U. Uh, for OpenCL, it's dash G for graphics card, OpenCL mining, and then you've just got F, which calls up the pool, and then it's the pool details, however there. Um, requested by the actual pool. It'll be different from pool to pool. Um, so just uh, go according to whatever pool you use. Um, like I said, the one that I'm using is the evenpool.co and that's working well. Um, so what else have we got going on here? Uh, I'll just go to the MSI Afterburner panel. Um, I haven't really done very much overclocking with it. I've just been letting the card. It's the first time I've sort of using the actual miner so I've just kind of been letting it go and do its own thing um, pretty much overnight actually. 
Um, uh, the card is running, uh, this is with the, uh, you know, it's not a dedicated ring, it's just a home computer. It's running at 76 degrees, which is okay. It's, it's not scorching hot, but it's not cool either. Um, the fan speed's running at 75%. Uh, core clock's 1329, and the memory clock is 3005. So that's those details. Oh, um, just before we continue, just have a quick look under the desk. Um, yeah, the actual machine is uh, using 285 watts. Um, so about 200 watts is just for the graphics card on that, in case you're interested. So I think that's those uh, main details. Uh, one other thing is with the uh, ETH miner, when you first fire it up using whatever details you use, doesn't matter if you're using uh, the CUDA settings or the OpenCL settings. Uh, when you first fire it up, it's going to create something. The ETH miner is going to create something called a DAG, D A G, um, and that's going to take a couple of minutes to go through just why it creates that very first uh, file. But um, that only happens the first time you use it unless it gets corrupted or something. So just be mindful of that when you first fire it up. It's going to take a couple of minutes to get uh, fully started. Um, I'll just show you the. Uh, pool details and the uh, minor uh, statistics. So if we go to the evenpool.com, if I can actually talk uh, properly, that would help. Um, then we go to uh, minor stats, and then it just asks you to enter your uh, Evram address. I think you can also enter your rig name as well, but we just enter our Evram address. And we click on go. Um, I'll just center this a little bit. Um, so we've got our Evram address at the top, um, our current hash rate, um, and then we've got how much uh, Evram we've earned. Um, we've got our hash rate over time, so this is like a 12 hour chart, you can see what's been going on there, I'll just turn it on. Um, so yeah, really I just started this uh, last night, and that's uh, pretty consistent over time, which is good. So it just shows you that the actual miner is, um, you know, quite, uh, quite stable and quite reliable. Um, so far, it hasn't dropped out or caused any problems. Um, then we've just got um, how much we've earned over time. So you get this uh, ramping kind of effect. What happens is you build up your earnings on the pool, and then it does a payout. So it drops down and it goes up. If you look on the main stats page, you'll see this kind of uh, jagged motion, and it's just where the um, the account builds up, then they pay out, builds up, pay out. So and so forth, um, and then we've got some share. Uh, sorry, my um, uh, mouse a little bit dry. So the word I was looking for was statistics. Um, let's continue on. So as you see down the bottom, uh, we've got some uh, estimated revenues. Um, so in a day, we're looking at three point three five dollars. Um, and that's actually really good. That's three times as much as it was with Feathercoin. With Feathercoin, it is about a dollar a day, um, you know, on this um, particular setup. Um, so it pays um, a lot better. And um, to be honest, I think Evram's probably got a much uh, better and brighter future than, you know, a coin like Feathercoin. It's certainly a lot more um, going for it. So it's probably, even if you didn't exchange directly to, um, you know, Bitcoin or cash or one way or the other. Um, even if you just kept these coins, they'll probably be better for you in the long run, quite possibly. Um, certainly probably hold their value a lot better. Um, and then down the bottom, we've got our uh, workers. So we've got the rig that we're using, which is Risky Fire Free. Um, this is the stated hash rate. This is what we told it. We thought it was going to be uh, mining that, and this is what your actual hash rate is. Um, and then at the bottom, we've got our first uh, payout. Um, then we've just got a link to the Evram chain, which is a uh, the Explorer, which shows um, obviously the various um, stats and transactions and that sort of thing as well. Um, so that should have all gone through. Um, so I think that's yeah. I think that covers um, all the main bits. So yeah, this has been uh, me mining uh, Evram. If you've got any questions or comments or anything you'd like to know, just close that box. Um, yeah, just leave a comment in the uh, comments area. Um, I'll put the links to the relevant um, uh, miner and stuff like that I use uh, in the description, and you should be able to access everything. And um, yeah, I'll leave it there. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Until um, the next video, take care.